Hey guys, today we're going to start chapter 8 and do the second part of chapter 8. We'll have read the first part of chapter 8 um, on in live class. So here is our second part of chapter 8. The players all played at once without waiting for turns, quarreling all the while and fighting for the hedgehogs. And in a very short time, the queen was in a furious passion and went stamping about and shouting, off with his head, off with his head, about once in a minute. Alice began to feel very uneasy, to be sure she had not as yet had any dispute with the queen, but she knew that it might happen any minute. And then, though, and then thought she, what would become of me? They're dreadfully fond of beheading people here. The great wonder is that there's anyone left alive. She was looking about for some way of escape and wondering whether she could get away without being seen when she noticed a curious appearance in the air. It puzzled her very much at first, but after watching it a minute or two, she made it out to be a grin and she said to herself, it's the Cheshire cat. Now I'll have someone to talk to. How are you getting on, said the cat, as soon as there was mouth enough for it to speak. Alice waited till her eyes appeared and then nodded. It's no use speaking to it, she thought, till its ears have come, or at least one of them. In another minute, the whole head appeared, and then Alice put down her flamingo and began an account of the game, feeling very glad she had someone to listen to her. The cat seemed to think that there was enough now in sight, and no more of it appeared. I don't think they play fairly, Alice began in rather a complaining tone. And they all quarrel so dreadfully, one cannot hear themselves speak. And they don't seem to have rules in particular, at least if there are, nobody attends to them. And you've no idea how confusing it is, all the things being alive. For instance, there's the arch I've got to go through next walking about at the other end of the ground, and I should have croqueted the queen's hedgehog just now, only it ran away when it saw the mice co mine coming. How do you like the queen, said the cat in a low voice. Not at all, said Alice. She's so extremely, let me see that, let you see the picture here. Just then, she noticed that the queen was close behind her, listening. So she went on, likely to win, that it's hardly worth while finishing the game. The queen smiled and passed on. Who are you talking to, said the king, going up to Alice and looking at the cat's head with great curiosity. It's a friend of mine, a Cheshire cat, said Alice. Allow me to introduce it. I don't like the look of it at all, said the king. However, it may kiss my hand if it likes. I'd rather not, said the cat. Well, don't be impertinent, said the king, and don't look at me like that. He got behind Alice as he spoke. A cat may look at a king, said Alice. I've read that in some book, but I don't remember where. Well, it must be removed, said the king very decidedly. And he called the queen who was passing at the moment. My dear, I wish you would have this cat removed. The queen had only one way of settling all difficulties, great or small. Off with his head, she said, even without looking around. So where have we heard that? She's been using that this whole last couple of chapters, hasn't she? I'll fetch, fetch the executioner myself, said the king eagerly, and he hurried off. Alice thought she might as well go back and see how the game was going on as she heard the queen's voice in the distance, screaming with passion. She had already heard her sentence, three of the players to be executed for having missed their turns, and she did not like the look of things at all, as the game was in such confusion that, that she never knew whether it was her turn or not. So she went in search of her hedgehog. The hedgehog was engaged in a fight with another hedgehog, which seemed to Alice an excellent opportunity for cocaine one of them with the other. The only difficulty was that her flamingo was gone across to the other side of the garden, where Alice could see it, trying in a helpless sort of way to fly up into a tree. 
By the time she had caught the flamingo and brought it back, the fight was over and both the hedgehogs were out of sight. But it doesn't matter much, thought Alice, as all the arches are gone from the side of the ground. So she tucked it away under her arm that it might not escape again and went back for a little more conversation with her friends. When she got back to the Cheshire Cat, she was surprised to find quite a large crowd collected around it. There was a dispute going on between the executioner, the king, and the queen, who were all talking at once, while all the rest were quite silent and looked very, very uncomfortable. That moment, Alice appeared. She was appealed to by all three to settle the question, and they repeated to her, though as they spoke at once, she found it very hard indeed to make out exactly what they said. The executioner's argument was that you couldn't cut off a head unless there was a body to cut it from. That had never had to do such a thing before, and he wasn't going to begin at his time in his life. The king's argument was that anything that had a head could be beheaded, and that you weren't to talk nonsense. The queen's argument was that if something wasn't done in less than a minute, then no time she'd have everybody executed all around. It was this last remark that had made the whole party look grave and anxious. Alice could think of nothing else to say, but it belongs to the Duchess. You better ask her about it. She's in prison, the queen said to the executioner. Fetch her here. The executioner went off like an arrow. The cat's head began fading away the moment he was gone, and by the time he had come back with the Duchess, it entirely disappeared. So the king and the executioner ran wildly up and down looking for it, while the rest of the party went back to the game. So what was different about this game of croquet? They were playing with hedgehogs and flamingos, and which makes it super fun, but kind of super crazy as well. The other thing is, was Alice confused during this? Who was the friend that came to visit her again? The Cheshire Cat, didn't he? So we've seen that character a couple of times. And then now we have the queen and we've heard her off with their heads and off with their heads. Do you like the queen? What do you think Alice should have said when they were asking her opinion? Yeah, it's, that would be a hard decision because I don't think she was gonna win with anyone. So how does the queen solve her problems? She just wants to kill everybody, execute them. So the queen had a lack of goodness and justice. She didn't show the virtue of patience, did you, waiting without complaining. If someone didn't do exactly what she wanted them to do immediately, then she was upset and said, off with their heads. This is probably very difficult for Alice too. So do you think that Alice responds really well? Or does she respond poorly? So sometimes we choose not to act with our virtues of love and patience and self-control, even if we're supposed to. And sometimes Alice does the same thing. She's, she tries to be kind. She tries to do what she's supposed to do. She tries to use the virtues that we have learned in kindergarten. But sometimes it's hard to do. Just like it's hard for us to not have sin in our life, it's this doesn't mean that if we don't act without virtue that we should not act without virtue. Do the people have fun around the queen? No, I don't think so. I think that they get a little crazy around the queen because she scares them. Does she show any kind of virtue of kindness or humility or anything? Not really. So I want you to think about as this chapter has come to the end and the crazy croquet game and the characters of the Cheshire Cat and all of that that's going on, I want you to think about what are the good qualities that Alice shows? What are the bad qualities that the other characters show? And how could they grow from those? So um, as we finish this chapter, I'll look forward to starting chapter nine with you. So enjoy Alice and the activities you can do with Alice this week. And I'll look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.